This is my PC. And I've got a whole lot of upgrades that I actually want to do to this thing. Yeah, so my PC is sort of in shambles right now. It's got no CPU, it's got no cooler, and it's got no SSD. But even when the PC was functional, it was pretty old. I think I accidentally created the opposite of a sleeper build because it had a seven year old CPU and a seven year old GPU. And if I'd spent the money I spent on the case and the fans on the actual PC, I probably wouldn't need to make this video right now. But here we are. And I seriously didn't realize how hard upgrading this PC would be. Oh, for f sake, bro. Piece of shit. But this is something I've really wanted to do for a while and I've really wanted to improve my video editing. So I figured let's just do it. So for some quick context, I'm upgrading from an i7 7700K on a Z270 motherboard, 2017 KB Lake. And I'm also upgrading from a GTX 1060, a card turning eight years old in July. I've also got 32 gigs of RAM, but I'm keeping that and passing it over to the next system. I've also got a 650 watt power supply. I'm gonna upgrade that a little bit and that's my system I'm upgrading. Since this is a big upgrade, the first thing I'm gonna do is to begin to take everything out of the case. I think the obvious thing to do is probably just take out the graphics card and try to get the motherboard out of here. And look at that dust, like, oh. Here's our GTX 1060. So we basically just started with all of the boring stuff, unplugging everything connected to the motherboard, power connectors, front IO connectors, so that we could free the motherboard to eventually take it out. And since we were going to be replacing the fans anyway, it was time to remove this rear exhaust one so that we could free space to make it easier to remove our motherboard out of here. This was the first out of six. Or well, we may as well take the RAM out just while we got it. There we go. Our two sticks of 16 gigabyte sticks. Of course, they're vengeance. And then we were finally able to free our Z270 motherboard, which meant we could go on and finish getting rid of all of the fans. That is two out of six, three out of six. Oh, and this one had my little little trees on it. So just a little nice decorative piece for my PC and it hung off here, which is pretty cool. I'll find a new spot for it once we put our new AIO in where that once was. Now it was time to remove the front panel of the case and I was already dreading this a little bit because I hadn't cleaned the case in a little while. So I knew there was gonna be some dust build up. But also, the front panel of the case is ridiculously hard to pull off. It was a struggle. I can't even pull on it. Oh, oh see? Jeez, man. Oh, I don't know if you can see, yeah, you can see the dust flying around a little bit. Oh, yuck. And especially, like, look at that. You can see the dust. Like, jeez, look at that. It's pretty clean, to be honest. It's not the worst, but... And I just realized there's a bit right over here just that landed on the table. Now it's time for the dreadful task of taking these fans out, which I'm not really looking too forward to as I'm only using a screwdriver. And I remember putting these in, oh, it was such a pain. And little did I know what I was foreshadowing to come. That's four out of six, five out of six. Now the last fan was not so easy. The bottom two screws were being blocked by the hard drive tray pressed right up against the fan, which we had to remove to get access. But even when we did, it was still very, very tight with the power supply in the way. So this had got to be the most difficult fan to get in and out. But we eventually were able to get the hard drive tray out and also the power supply, which just felt like a really big inconvenience. Even though we were gonna remove it anyway, I just didn't expect to be doing it so soon, but we eventually were able to do it. And actually, here's a quick fun fact. This Corsair CX650M was the first PC part I ever bought brand new. And that was to power my GTX 1060, which I'm actually parting ways with right now. 
I'll put a photo up, but that was my OG system. We removed our sixth and final fan thanks to removing the power supply. Just to show you, all six fans, the 3140s and the 3120s. And I'm gonna take this opportunity to put all of our new fans in the spaces we just created so that we can do it with ease and no problems and lots of space. So for starters, this fan actually, it does look pretty cool. It's got these rubbers to, I think, avoid sound or whatever, so it stops shaking. It looks pretty clean for exhaust as well. But it was not smooth sailing from here. Oh, for f sake, bro. This was honestly probably the worst part of the build, and it was mainly for one reason why. I was only using a screwdriver, and since these fans were brand new, the thread had not been broken in. So I was putting them in brand new, trying to break in the thread while they were at an angle and it was very, very hard. I honestly just ended up giving up and restarting and screwing each fan individually on the table, making the thread, breaking the thread, and then coming back and reinstalling this. But I obviously learnt this the hard way, tried installing them fresh, and then had to put them down, break the thread, and then come back and do it again. It was a big process, I went through the same thing originally installing the fans. I didn't think it was going to be this bad, but I had to do it the same way and just struggle. But a bit of frustration and stripped screws had other ideas. Oh, for f**k's sake, bro. F**k me. Get out, you head. Piece of shit. Look at these fucking screws. Look at this shit. Now, I'm not one for swearing, but this build really tested my patience. <sighs> f me. Oh, they look good at least, but jeez, man, those screws, having to thread those things, oh my god. After finally dealing with the problematic fans, it was time to move on to more interesting things and set up our platform. So here is the CPU and motherboard we're gonna be replacing our Z270 and i7-7700K with. We have gone for the Ryzen 7 5800X and only because we got a really good deal on it. I paid 250 Aussie dollars for this and I'll put the conversions up, but I was absolutely stoked with that deal and really quickly i just want to show you that this was an actual deal that i got and i'm not just making up these fantastic deals the actual marketplace listing isn't available anymore i bought this like six weeks ago so it's probably gone away but you can see the messages where we agreed on 250 dollars and you can also see the group photo which is the ryzen 7 5800x box and so we're going to return our RAM, which will fit kind of nicely with this. I know it's not white, but it's got a silvery look to it, which sort of goes with the white that we're going for. So we'll go ahead and put this RAM in. Quite liking that look. And also in getting the platform ready, we are going to put our new SSD in. So we're going to take off this uh, heat sink that came with. Here it is, heat sink out. But I'm also gonna take off the big one at the bottom too while we're here because I'm also gonna put in our original SSD into this section. Oh, oh. There we go, wow, it's a big heat sink. So here is our original SSD. This is a one terabyte P3, so it's a Gen 3 SSD. You can probably understand why I went with the Gen 4. Gonna unbox this one because I want to see how similar they look to each other. So, just, well, so we don't touch anything and ruin anything. T500 and the P3. There we go, that is pushed in all the way. Now we can do this. So that is heat sink back in. And now we can put this SSD in, that's quite exciting. This is a two terabyte SSD I was really looking forward to working with, especially because it has Gen 4 speeds and I was able to take advantage of them with my new Gen 4 platform. Uh, there we go. 
After installing the T500, that meant that the motherboard was now ready with everything we've done to go into our case. You may notice I've temporarily moved the rear exhaust fan to the top just so that I can get enough clearance to put our motherboard in. Its cables were interfering with the IO shield so it was really easy just to get rid of it despite all the pain we went through to get rid of it to make it easier. That is our motherboard officially installed. I must say the silver does look really really good with the white in our case. It looks really good. With the motherboard installed, that meant it was time to officially take on the task of installing our AIO. And the instructions have gone online. I'm not too happy about that because the physical is really good, but also I didn't realize this is metal. I've never worked with AIO before, so didn't know that. Whoa. I also got confused about what the washers were for. I thought they were for the fans. Uh, I'm gonna have to go check the manual, but I'm filming with my phone, so I'm gonna have to turn this off just to check. Okay, so we've just learned that the washers go between the the radiator screw, oops, between the radiator screw, so I believe, they go through here, and they'll mount with the case, so not a concern at this stage, we can just go ahead and mount our fans. There it is, looking pretty good all together now. Let's get this bad boy installed. So I've gone ahead and already installed the radiator. It was a bit hard so I decided it was easy just to really quickly do it off camera. I had a hand holding the whole thing while I was trying to screw everything down. As you can see, I've cable tied the little plastic keeping our thermal paste safe just to not make any mess. And this is the style that we want to mount our block like with the tubes running like that. So we had to be a little bit careful here just to not make any mess with the thermal paste and then we were A-OK -okay to go ahead and install the block, which was a little bit awkward initially, just holding everything down, but then it was all okay. Now managing those cables, that's a different story. I'll have to worry about that and manoeuvre around the heat sink. You know what I didn't realise? I'm gonna regret this so bad. Look at where my CPU, can you see those fan headers? I'll point it out in the editing, but look, how am I supposed to get to that? When this is the level, when this is the level and they're pretty much hit at this height past, oh. I'm gonna have to just try come through the side like over here, but oh, it looks sick, but, but I'll figure that out. And after managing all of those cables, it was time to do our graphics card, which we went with the RTX 2060 Super. And I know what you're thinking, this might be an underwhelming upgrade, but from a 1060, this is gold and it's white to match. And I'm very excited to have an upgrade because even though it's not the best upgrade, anything from a 1060 is a decent upgrade, let's say. Okay, so that's it in. I was so impressed with how this was coming together. I really liked it. We'll also really quickly just pop in our Wi-Fi adapter. Looking really snug and that heat sink makes it look nice and bulky too. Next up, if you haven't guessed it yet, we've got the power supply. We have a UD750GM, a gold modular 80 plus unit from Gigabyte. We've had this lying around. It's a little bit of a better unit than what we're currently using. So I thought we may as well upgrade, but I'm sort of dreading it because we have built up so many cables and we're only adding to the mess and the plethora we're about to deal with. And now we can quite simply just spin these, uh, was it captive? captive thumb screws and you'll get to come back once all these cables are mounted we'll also be putting the cable extensions on them too so stay tuned for that so this is how we're currently tracking we've plugged in everything from the case going into the motherboard we've just introduced this commander thing I don't know what it's actually called but we put it in and we put all the RGBs in order going like one two three four five six all the way around that way and we're still yet to plug all the fans into it but I thought I would introduce these cable extensions because I'm just going to start doing everything it's going to get messy so if we have a look at what we've actually got here we have we've got a 24 pin cable looking very good so that's the connection between our power supply and the cable extension the cable run up like this and poke through it to plug into our motherboard we will also repeat this process for the CPU 8-pin EPS as well as our PCIe cables too. I just plugged in the CPU power and 
do not even ask me how I got this in because look here's just for a scope of the view radiator it drops down a significant bit so much that it's almost in line with our RAM made me realize a 280 uh, AIO would not have worked because it would have probably bumped into that and the, the heat sink over there anyway look at that you see that right up there guess what that is that's our 8 pin EPS and that was a struggle to get in. I don't even know how I did that. Look at that. It's got the bend on it and everything. Because look how much this sticks down by. This case, it's probably more intended for a front mount AIO. I don't even know how I got that in. But we did. So we're happy with that. So this is the cable management. And for what it is, I was pretty happy with it. And I'm pretty confident we're going to be able to close the back panel. So this is the inside of the back panel. We're just going to try lock all these little clamps in and just push and hope for the best. In a funny way, I'm just going to try hold everything and slide. Hey, that's pretty good. I tell you, it was actually easy to do it this time than it was in my previous setup of the same case. Next, we're going to be putting our front panel back on. We've put our mesh here we've cleaned it it's all dry now we're going to put the front panel back so this is finally our finished look we've got the cable extensions in we've had some really tight calls at the top trying to get all the cables through we've run the tubing like that i think it looks pretty okay the graphics card is not sagging at all so i don't have any concerns we've got our ssds the sata ones just filling space even though the top one isn't functional, I'm still happy to have it there as it looks good and it adds to that. I'm super happy about this. And here's a clip of me yapping, but basically to sum everything up, this PC looks great. I'm really happy to use it and I'll probably keep it for a very long time now. So I'm currently using the PC right now to edit this actual video, but if you have a quick look here, I've set all the lights up and everything. It all looks pretty great. And in the editing process, you can see I've got the degrees of my CPU there on the AIO. It's obviously not doing anything right now, but it works really good. And the SSD is really quick too. You can see temp goes up a bit when I'm just you know, scrubbing along the line, but it is really great. And this PC is so damn good. Please like and subscribe if you wish to, but that is the PC in question editing this video. Thank you for watching.